and I'm not a believer. I think it's extremely unlikely that there are little green men flying around in spaceships. You got 90% of them either delusional, out and out hoaxes, or honest mistakes. UFO hunting is one of the best ways for us to determine who we are and where we're going. There's absolutely no evidence that UFOs exist or have ever existed. What is the approach that you take in hunting for UFOs? Are you skeptical? Well, well, the answer uh, yeah. is yes. We both are. Uh, I'm more skeptical than Bill is. We come from from different angles. Actually, um, Ted is the hard scientist, very skeptical, wants the evidence, wants something he can throw in a test tube, see if it turns green, blue, or purple. And I tend to go after what the witness stories say. What are they attesting to? What have they seen? How credible are they? Where do they see it? What do the police reports or military reports say? So we approach it from different sides. Ted is physical sciences, I'm social sciences. No object found, no constellation object found at that point of reference where we're looking at. So it's right. saying that's, so this says it's not a star. It's not a star. We were coming up Highway 59 and a UFO came down in front of us on the road. It was about 100 foot long. And four years later, I found this piece of metal in Mars. I mean, I don't know how it got in my body. Dr. Ackworth, do you believe at some point the, the odds are on the side of there's, there's something out there and eventually they're going to be smart enough to build something to come visit us? Because there's, as uh, Carl Sagan used to say, billions and billions right. of planets out there. Aren't the odds in favor of there's something? Yeah, you know, Barry, you're right. I, 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 I think you'd have to be pretty narrow-minded to believe that, that the human race is the only uh, intelligent um, race in the entire universe. Uh, you know, we used to believe that everything, the sun orbited around the earth and, and that was pretty narrow-minded and now we realize that we're less significant in the universe and statistically the odds are almost certain that there are other forms of, of life out there. Uh, but for me personally, that, that's a very different question from, you know, are some of those extraterrestrial life forms actually visiting our planet. Uh, they would have to be overcoming incredibly difficult technological hurdles to have spaceships that could travel hundreds and hundreds of light years through space to visit us. Um, you know, when it gets to that question about whether or not we have UFOs visiting Earth, I'm extremely skeptical. I'm open-minded. Uh, I try to be unbiased on the show and analyze the evidence. Um, but I, I need to see some really hard physical proof to, to convince me that that these life forms are actually visiting us. Do you get a hold of it? I got the whole thing. You really have to have experienced something uh, very intense to come out and say, look, I, I believe I was abducted. Look at the size of that. It's moving in inside Tim's arm. That's pretty bizarre. It senses it's being invaded. Dr. Burns, do you have a, a kind of explanation for uh, what these, if there are visits and there are UFOs with creatures in them, are we the sort of animal planet channel to the intergalactic group of people watching us? You know, like Jane Goodall watching gorillas? Or are they teenagers kind of buzzing us going, let's mess with these guys? They don't have to visit us anymore because they're already here and they've been here for thousands of years. And in fact, there's no such thing as they, they might very well be us. So that's one thing we explore. And the other thing we explore is the number of different ET species that might actually be out there. Are they here to watch us? We think yes. Are they here to mess with us? Possibly. Or are we completely irrelevant to their scheme of the universe and they simply have a nice fight in our skies and we see them getting shot down? Did you find it? Yeah, it's over here. You found oh, it. Yeah. We've discovered a wreckage of a plane that's strewn about out here in the desert. It, it could be the plane that crashed with the UFO. I can't really know that until we analyze this and find something anomalous on it, maybe some kind of radioactivity or something that would give us a clue that maybe there was some contact with the UFO. Dr. Burns, you mentioned the possibility that UFOs have actually uh, populated our planet. I've talked to a lot of people that would like to believe something like that, but don't you think if people were smart enough to figure out how to get here from there, they would have also sort of written it down someplace? I mean, started colony in the year 2000 BC. Well, think about this, Barry. First of all, first of all, if they have been here for thousands of years, don't you think that they have already written it down? I'm sure there are ancient texts that can be interpreted to show they've come here, they've been here, and they planted us here. But to answer your quick question and kind of wrap this up, you will see this Wednesday night a story of a person who claimed to have been abducted, taken aboard a spacecraft, 
put back together after a plane crash and put back in the hospital and next week you'll meet an actual abductee whose implant was taken out. That's coming up on the UFO Hunters. His name isn't Kucinich, is it? No, 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 okay, no, no. Just check. <laughs> Dr. Ackworth, Dr. Burns, thank you so very much. Fascinating subject, fascinating series and uh, good luck to you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Thanks, Barry. It's been a pleasure.